Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care series. I like to uh, alternate between education topics, use case topics, and safety ethics validation uh, topics. And uh, today I'm doing a use case topic, and I promise to do one on generative, U uh, generative AI. Uh, so today I'm going to do kind of an interesting use case. I don't know how useful uh, it is, but one of our um, physicians, our CMIO of one of our business lines, is an ED physician uh, in town. Uh, and in a busy ED, sometimes he said a lot of the docs will just write information down on a piece of paper on a napkin as they're taking care of the patient. Uh, and then when they get back to the computer, they'll sort of document the, the visit, the encounter in the, uh, in the EMR at that point. Um, and he brought uh, home one of the, or brought into the office, an example napkin. And I'll show you a screenshot of this um, in, uh, in a second. And uh, we got to thinking, well, could we actually just take that napkin and somehow digest that into the EMR, into a draft uh, note using these large language models and these image uh, models? So what I'm going to take you through is whether that actually works. Now I'm going to write a, a recreation of this napkin on the board. And while I do this, uh, why don't you see if you can figure out what it actually uh, says? Okay, so this is a recreation of the napkin on the board. Uh, and the question I have for you is, do you know what this says? And so obviously it's um, using a lot of acronyms, um, but it's not written in a way that only you can, you can read. So these are sort of common acro acronyms that as a physician or other clinicians would recognize. So 45M, this is a 45-year-old male history, coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease, pulmonary embolism. On these two medications, chest pain for six hours. Uh, see this row, this interesting row, it just has a bunch of numbers, um, but you, you might be able to determine this is um, blood pressure, um, heart rate, oxygen saturation, that sort of thing. Uh, and then like if you go to the bottom, you can see these two kind of check boxes, cardiology consult. So, um, so it's kind of written in, uh, in, in um, you know, using mnemonics and acronyms, things like that, shorthand. Um, but it's legible, and, um, and maybe these large language models should be able to digest it. So now I'm going to go to the computer, and I'm going to show what it looks like as it digests these uh, into, um, into a clinical system. So uh, now you're in your EMR, and you're in your AI assistant piece of the EMR. You see that paper clip on the bottom uh, right I'm going to click on that and import a scan image of that napkin. There are more elegant workflows, but this is just what we've done so far. Uh, I'll put in a prompt. Can you put in a structured clinical note? And what's going to happen is it's taking that image, basically all the pixels, and it's sending it to a GPT vision model in this case. Uh, and that's turning that into raw text, basically, what's written on the napkin. Uh, and then that, pro that process actually takes about a minute, so I'm going to speed it up now. And now it says um, generating, so it's taking that text and putting it into the structured clinical note. Now you can see the note uh, coming out here. It's pretty amazing. So 45-year-old male, medical history of those diseases, the current meds that the patient is on, uh, chief complaint. Actually, there's a, um, see where it says radiating to the left lower extremity? It was actually L-U-E, um, left upper extremity. So that's a... Um, that's an error uh, that uh, that needs to be uh, corrected. Uh, go to the vital signs uh, section. You can see uh, that's pretty amazing. That was that row of numbers, so it's turning it into, um, you know, it knows what they are, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, um, you know, the units. Um, it, and it must figure it out from the numeric range, the slash between the numbers and the blood pressure, the percent sign and the oxygen saturation, or maybe those numbers are already written at, in that order. Uh, you can see down at the assessment of plan, the cardiology consult, the two lab tests uh, to be uh, ordered. Um, so it's done a, um, a not a perfect job, 
Um, but uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, pretty amazing uh, job taking um, you know mnemonics and turning it into a note um, a note that needs to be uh, edited. So uh, I'm sure the accuracy uh, can and will get better as we have new versions of models, better prompts in our uh, development process. And there's a human in the loop in this particular uh, process, which is great and uh, necessary, given it's not uh, not perfect. A physician should review the note and make any final edits, but it is an incredible time saver to just take an image like that um, and uh, just handwritten scribbles and turn that into full sentences and a pretty accurate but not perfect note for the physician to edit and file into the EMR. What's interesting about this is actually it used two different models. So the first model was a vision model, which basically took a picture of this napkin and turned it into text. Not necessarily a note yet, but turned it into text. So I'll show you the interim outcome uh, of that process now. If I click on that image, uh, you can see actually this is the result of the interim model. So the note appears to be a brief patient record, a reminder. Uh, so it actually does generate a lot of text that's not just what's written on the napkin, but it tries to fill out what it's seeing. So it obviously has a quite powerful model there uh, as well with the vision model. But it's not structured as a clinical note yet, and that's the final step of the process. And then the second model took that text, basically, and then turned it into a properly formatted uh, medical notes. So it used a GPT vision model in the first case, and then a regular large language model in the uh, in the second case. So um, uh, what I showed you there, though InterSystems is in the EMR business outside the U.S., uh, this is just experimental work that we're doing with generative AI. This is not available for uh, sale and is subject to regulatory uh, approval. So not not uh, available yet. But I thought this was an interesting. Uh, use case and an interesting use of multiple uh, multiple generative AI models and something that, frankly, I didn't realize would, would actually work so well. So I hope you found that interesting, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.